It was the summer of 96. That's almost my favorite number. We lived in Harlem, so my mother was a bit overprotective. Or maybe the exact right amount of protective. It's hard to tell sometimes. I had a few friends that had much more freedom than I did, and my mom decided that maybe it was time to allow me some extra space. This opened up a whole new world to me. Some of it was nice, some of it was terrifying, and some of it, sadly, ended up being a little bit of both. I was taught the same rules everyone else was. Obey your curfew, don't go to people's houses you don't know, and the classic, don't take candy from strangers. This story involves breaking two of those three rules. So like I said, it was my first summer free of my mother. One hot evening, my friend John and I were about to head back to my house so we wouldn't miss curfew. I had a few dollars and thought it would be a good idea to get an icy from the corner store. John thought this idea was brilliant, but thought it would be better instead to see the candy lady. I'd never heard of her, but she lived on the first floor of his building. She was an older woman that would sell candy, homemade cookies, and ices made from freezing Kool-Aid out of her apartment. He said you get much more icy if you buy from her. So that's what we did, even though this was breaking rules two and three. I was fascinated by this and couldn't stop thinking about her for the entire evening. We did get way more icy. Her profit margins must have been great. Kool-Aid was cheap. Water was free. She had no signs up. How did all this start? John told me everyone in his projects knew about the candy lady, that she'd been there doing this since before he was born. That summer, we went back to her often. I loved her green Kool-Aid ices and her bags of red gummy bears. There were some other kids in the neighborhood that were also beginning to spread their wings, and one of them got the terrible idea to rob the candy lady, Carlos. Carlos had it better than most of us. Till this day, I still don't understand why he did this. Allegedly, he wanted to get some money to buy a stereo. Anyways, Carlos waited for the lobby to be empty and knocked on the candy lady's door. She answered, same as always. But when she did, Carlos pushed the door hard, tossing the candy lady to her back. She landed with a heavy thud and her body shook with pain. Carlos demanded any money she had and then took a bag of red gummy bears. The candy lady died before morning. Carlos didn't mean to kill her, but she was dead. And if not for him hitting her with the door, she'd be alive. The worst part is that Carlos got away with it. Or at least he thought he did. You see, Carlos had a different problem now, one he couldn't talk about. Everywhere he looked, he would see something. It wasn't the candy lady. It was red gummies. Everywhere. At the park, he'd find them on the ground. At the store, he'd see a trail of them leading to those employees-only areas. Even on the train. Red gummies. Carlos didn't know what to do. No one knew he was guilty. And he didn't know how to express what he was seeing without confessing what he'd done. Until one night, Carlos had a dream. He was wandering through a void, surrounded by gummies. He was terrified. He slowly walked through the void until he saw it. A giant red gummy. The gummy started moving towards him, looking around, searching. It was trying to find him. He hid behind some other gummies and desperately tried to wake himself up. Please wake up. Oh, please wake up. And then he did. When they found him the next day, he had nothing but pills and red gummies in his stomach. And according to the legend, she's still around today acting as an agent of justice, punishing the wicked. <laughs>